I've entitled the message tonight, Santa-tized. It almost sounds like it's mispronounced and misspelled, but it's really not. Santa-tized because I feel strongly that there's a large population that knows more about Santa Claus than they know about Jesus Christ. Henceforth, Santa time. So if you have your Bibles with you tonight, I would ask you if you could get them, or, or there's one in your uh, in the seat in front of you. I would ask you to stand if you're able to do that. We're going to read uh, a few verses of Scripture tonight. I don't. Uh, we put several of them in the in the uh, in your bulletins, but we're not going to read all of that. We're just going to read a part of that. But in John chapter one, I'd like to read one verse of scripture, and it is found in verse fourteen. Okay, verse fourteen, and that scripture says this: "And the Word became flesh." And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten son of the father. Full of grace. And of truth. And then in the book of Galatians. We read two verses of scripture. Let me get there real quick. The book of Galatians. Two verses of scripture. Verses four and five. But when the fullness of time had come. Let me tell you a little bit about that phrase. We kind of read that and we say, yeah, okay, that's fine. And we just kind of go right over real quick. Let me tell you what that verse means. When the fullness of time has come. What that verse actually says is this. At exactly the right time, God sent forth his son. Now that ought to bless your heart tonight. Because God was not, not even one second late in sending his son to be born of a woman at exactly the right time. And that is the God that we serve tonight. He is a God that shows up exactly on time. Never a second early, never a second late. And so, and at exactly the right time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem, who? To redeem those who were under the law. That's us, folks. We were under the law. God sent forth his son to redeem you and I, those of us who are under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And then our last scripture is found in the book of Philippians, chapter 2 and verse 5. And the scripture says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Hold on to that, because we're going to talk a little more about that as the service goes on. But made himself of no reputation, <coughs> taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And this, this is the phrase that I really want us to capture tonight. And being found in appearance, in appearance, in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of a cross. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, your children, every one of us are here tonight, Lord. 
We chose to be here. We wanted to be here. You left the conference of heaven to come down to earth. Lord, we left the conference of home to come to this place tonight to tell you unequivocally, clearly, audibly, and loudly, happy birthday. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and all of God's people said, amen. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Well, here we are. Christmas Eve is finally here. All of the gifts have been bought. Right? They've all been bought. They've all been paid for. Right? Not really. <laughs> but kind of, sort of. Some of them have. The tree is up, right? Absolutely. The lights are shining brightly, right? You've got the garland up. Isn't that pretty? All the greenery. It's beautiful. I mean, look at it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Some people have mistletoe hanging, hanging up there. It's a beautiful, beautiful time of the year. Some of us are exactly where we want to be at this time. Some of us are not able to be exactly where we want to be at this time. Some are deployed overseas, and there's a separation there. Many of you have been there. You know what that is like and what, what that, those, those emotions, you know what that feels like. And so I would just like for us right now just to take a moment to have a word of prayer for those that are not able to be with the ones they love, whether it be through a separation or perhaps even through death. Let's just pray right now. Father in heaven, Lord, we just bow our knee. And Lord, we remember those right now who are less fortunate than we are. Lord, we are truly a blessed people. And we count our blessings tonight. Lord, we have our comfortable homes, our central heat. We have enough food to probably feed an army. We have all of our family around us. What a glorious time. But Lord, not everybody is that fortunate. I understand that. And I ask that by your grace, that you put your arms around those people even as we speak right now. Lord, your name is Emmanuel, which, as Bill so clearly said, means God with us. He is here. Remind us of that name. Keep <coughs> all of us safe. I believe tonight that there is a, a large part of the world, and I don't, I don't think it applies to anybody in this room tonight, but really, they, they really don't know what Christmas is all about, the meaning of Christmas, the purpose of Christmas. And it's staggering to me that some know more about Santa than they know about Jesus Christ. For you see, Christmas tonight is it's not about talking snowmen and about flying reindeer. Although I've watched Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeers for 60 years of my life, and I love it. And I'll watch that bless you. I'll watch it next year. I just absolutely love those, uh, those, those stories. But Christmas is so much more 
It's much more than trees and lights and, and garland. And it's more than, a, more than a fat man who walks around ho, ho, ho. -ing. It's much more than all of that for Christmas as Christians know. It is about Jesus Christ. That's who we celebrate tonight. The birth of our Lord leaving heaven, coming down in the form of a baby, absolutely a miracle, virgin birth. It's a wonderful, wonderful time. We know that that is the greatest gift that mankind has ever received in the form of a baby. And I've had all week, well, really two weeks, because we were gone last week. I really had two weeks to just think about this time and, and let it simmer in my soul and in my spirit. Thinking about, thinking about tonight. And as I was thinking, the Lord brought to my mind a story that I had heard one time. And it is a story about a man that was going home to visit his family for Christmas, actually about this time of year. And the airline attendant ushered the gentleman up to first class on an airline, on a major airline. He had never flown first class before. He always wanted to. He always wondered what was behind the curtain of first class. What is it behind there? He never knew. Well, the airline stewardess put him in first class. And he was so happy. <laughs> so happy. I mean, he had, they gave him some fine china. They gave him a glass, a real glass. They gave him some utensils, a real knife and a real fork and a real spoon. They gave him a real napkin. They, gave, they even gave him a, a, a warm towel to, after he ate, to do this. He was absolutely in, in hog heaven at that time. He couldn't believe it. A little while later, the airline stewardess came to this gentleman, and she said, I'm sorry, sir, we've made a mistake. You have to go through the curtain, and you have to go back to economy class. Well, he was absolutely devastated. Absolutely, he was torn apart. The one time he gets to sit in first class, when he gets up, he blew a gasket. He gets up, he blessed the airline attendant. He did. He told her where she could spend eternity. <laughs> And he just went crazy. He said, this is the worst airline. I'll never fly this airline, not ever again in my whole life. And he got his bags and he went through the curtain and he sat down in the first seat there in economy class. And I thought, you know what? That is just like us. That's just like us. I mean, we, we, we think we get something and we don't get our way. We want something and we don't get our way. And we go absolutely ballistic on whoever's in our way. Well, the scripture says, and we read it earlier in Philippians chapter 2. This man blew a gasket when he had to leave first class and go to economy class. Jesus Christ, according to Philippians chapter two, says that he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So what that is saying is that Jesus left heaven, he left first class, and he went through the curtain, down to earth, economy class, 
to dwell amongst mankind. And I, that just kind of blows my mind because Jesus was equal with God in every way. I mean, Jesus, we understand this. Jesus is the second person in the Trinity. He is the Son of God. He's just as much God as the Holy Spirit is. But he humbled himself. He was the creator of the universe and the second person in the Trinity. So what am I saying tonight? I'm saying, I'm saying this. As we, as we think about Jesus Christ and he humbling himself, he was God in the flesh. Yes, he was a baby born in a manger. Yes, he was. But that little baby born in a manger was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was not inferior to God. No. He was not less than God. No. He was not God's junior partner. In anything. No, he was not. He was as much God that day as he was on the day that God created the heavens and the earth. For on day one, the scripture says, God created on day one the heavens and the earth. And he said, let there be light. And don't you know Jesus was there that day? That was on day one. On day two, God created the sky. And he created the clouds. Don't you know that, that Jesus was there that day when God created the sky? And then on day three, he, God created dry land. He created the mountains and the trees and the grass and the, and the dirt and the soil. He created all of that. And don't you know that Jesus was there that day when God created that. And then on day four, God hung the stars. Awesome. Don't you know that Jesus was there that day? On day four, Jesus not only hung the stars, he put the sun, which is the source of light, and then he hung the moon, which reflects that source of light. He did all of that on day four, and Jesus was there on day four. On day five, God created all, everything that lives in the water, everything, the plankton, the whales that eat the plankton, the seaweed that some people eat, he created all of that. He created the fish. He created the starfish. He created the stingfish. He created, there's a sting, stingfish. Probably not. Stay great, thank you. He did that. And he did a lot of other things. And he did all of that on day four. I was correct, on day five. On day six, which was an awesome day, when God stood and said, let us make man in our image. Don't you know that Jesus was right there when God said that. And when God said, let us make man in our image, and he saw everything that he had made, and he said, it is very good. Not just a little bit good, but it is very good. And don't you know that Jesus was there that day when he said that. And then on day seven, when everything was created, the scripture says that God rested. 
He rested. And don't you know that Jesus rested too? Because Jesus and God are one. They're one. Though he was equal with God in every way, in every way, Jesus said, I volunteer to leave first class and to walk through the curtain and go into economy and sit down. I volunteer to do that. I volunteer to leave heaven and go down to earth. I volunteer to be born in a, a stinky manger, in an, in an animal trough. I volunteer to do that. Some of you live on a farm. You know about animals. You know what animals do after they eat and what they smell like. Jesus was born amongst all of that. We glamorize it. Absolutely we glamorize it. And we romanticize it. But that's what it was like. And he volunteered to do that. Jesus said, I volunteer, I volunteer to stoop down and to wipe the disciples' feet, to clean their feet. I volunteer to do that. I volunteer to humble myself and lower myself. I volunteer to do that. And what is absolutely amazing to me is that he volunteered to, know, to do that knowing that one of his very own would deny him and another one would betray him. He still volunteered to wipe their feet. He volunteered to let himself be taken, to be tried unjustly, to be abused of mankind, to be humiliated, to be stripped, and ultimately to be nailed to a cross by the very people he came to save. Now, isn't that something? That is the Jesus that you and I serve. I volunteer to do this. And I think it's absolutely awesome. For you see, he who knew no sin became sin for us, the scripture said, that we might be made the righteousness in him. Now catch that. Catch that. He who knew no sin took our sin. I, I gave him my sin. He gave me his righteousness. Now what is fair about that? Not a thing. But that's what he did. He is the perfect Lamb of God. You see, he went from being equal with God and having no sin to having every sin of the world, of every person ever born, past, present, and future, laid on his shoulders. That's the God and the Jesus that we serve. Tonight, I told this story earlier. Yesterday, I had a blessing yesterday. I, I, I did. I had uh, somebody gave me some pecans in the corn, and. In the, in the earlier service, I said I, I peeled the pecans, but I was corrected. They said, you don't peel pecans. You don't peel them. Well, in Louisiana, you do peel pecans, but in here, you don't peel them. You, you crack them. Thank you very much. You crack them. That's what you do here. So I spent all afternoon cracking pecans. I, actually, I had a good time. I really did. I put a chair out there, and I had, you know, gone good, had a good old time. 
And when I finished, some of, some of my pecans, a lot of the pecans were good. And some of them were not good. But when I finished everything, I, we live out in the woods, so I threw them all out in the woods, right? Well, this morning, when I got up, Don at 04, like all good chaplains do, then. <laughs> I got up, and I studied, and I read, and I meditated, and I thought about tonight. And as the dawn, as the night left and the dawn began to show forth, I noticed there were a bunch of squirrels going after those pecans. And I watched them for about an hour. Bill, a whole hour. And those squirrels, they would, they'd, they'd, they'd hop over there, and they'd, they'd, see, they'd see a pecan, and they'd go, they'd get that pecan, and they'd, they'd hop back, they'd go over, and they'd bury it. They'd bury the pecan. Then they'd go back, and they'd find another pecan. And they'd go back. And they'd bury another pecan. And they did that for, hour, for over an hour. I watched them. The little tail just doing that. And I watched them. And I thought, you know what? I'll bet you those squirrels thought it was Christmas. <laughs> That's right. Because I'll bet you when they went to bed last night, they had no idea that those pecans were gonna be there when they got up. All these gifts, they had, they had no idea. And I got to think, and that's very similar, I think, to us. We are so, we are so blessed. We have so many gifts from the Father. And my prayer tonight is that we would not do like the squirrels did. We wouldn't go, get our gift, our pecan, and go bury our gift. I pray we won't do that. That we would have our gift, that we would have our light, and let it shine brightly for all the world to see. We have a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to do that tonight.